Welcome and thank you. It's Thursday, day two, and we appreciate seeing all of you. Thank you so much for being here at our 2022 uh, ULCT Annual Convention, thank you for traveling to Salt Lake and joining us. It's just a treat to spend this time with all of you. As the fastest growing uh, state in the nation, we face critical challenges around infrastructure, economic development, housing, water, and homelessness. Our objective during this session is to hear from key state leaders in these important topics and to discuss how state and local leaders can work together as we try to tackle these challenges. First, we have the good fortune of hearing from Wayne Niederhauser, who's currently serving as the State of Utah's Homeless Services Coordinator. Wayne previously served 12 years in the Utah State Senate, including six years as the Senate President. Team ULCT spent significant time with Wayne over the last year working on homelessness policy, particularly in Salt Lake County on HB 440 with more to come in the 2023 legislative session. After Wayne, we will have the, the great luck, the good fortune, to be able to hear from Wasatch Front Regional Council Executive Director, Mr. Andrew Gruber, who will explain Utah's growth challenges and our collective plans and efforts to address them. Then we'll have our panel discussion on housing, economic development, infrastructure, and water. Our secret weapon to tackle these challenges is the Utah way. We collaborate, we work together, we come together, and we use data-driven decisions to create policy that together we can lift and make life better. We can tackle these challenges. It's how we do it. We do it special here in Utah. You're gonna hear from some of the best in the state about how we do it and about what is being done, some of what we're working on. So please, first we'll hear from Wayne Niederhauser and then from Andrew, Wayne. Please help me welcome Wayne Neerhauser. So thank you, Mayor Ramsey. Uh, appreciate the introduction. And also, um, we, can cha we can face these most difficult challenges together. And it's going to take us uh, collaborating state, county, city to tackle these issues. First of all, I'm probably one of the most unlikely people to be in this position. Uh, real estate developer, CPA, uh, recovering legislator turned social worker. And believe me, there couldn't be a more different uh, occupation for me. And I know there was a lot of people when I was put in this position, especially in the provider community, that wondered, you know, what's he doing in that position? He probably doesn't know anything about homeless services. Guilty. Uh, I've had this position since last year, uh, but I think the governor put me in the position because I knew, because he knew that we would need to uh, direct policy and get funding. And I am an expert in dealing with the legislative process. So um, I knew that I didn't know about homeless services. And so I did a statewide tour, and I've visit, visited every city, but I've visited many cities statewide, from St. George to Logan, from Tooele to Vernal, and homelessness is an issue statewide. Uh, and I also wanted to know from people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, and so my wife and I, we spend every Friday night doing outreach in the community with people who are experiencing homelessness. And that has been the best experience for me because I've learned from the people who are actually in that situation what, what the difficulties are, why they're there, what might be a pathway for them in the future. And you know, there's a lot of hopelessness. And so anyway, let me go to my next slide. Oh, I'm going back. Um, Homelessness is a community condition, and it's going to take community to remedy it. Every community is a source of homelessness, whether that's mental health, behavioral health, addiction, um, it's children aging out of foster care, 
It's intergenerational poverty. Many of the people I get to talk to that I've built some trust and friendship with, um, they've never known what, what I knew as a kid growing up. And, and so these are some very difficult situations for us and for communities. And what is your community doing to prevent and treat this most difficult human condition? Think about that. And what are you going to do in the future? It's gonna take all of us to address this. Just this last month, 77 families showed up at the road home. The road home family resource center is in Midville. And because the shelter's full, all the vouchers are gone, uh, all other resources, they had to turn those families away. And when we're talking families, we're talking children. And that really motivates me to try and do something. And we got to work together. So I'm just going to give you one uh, item of, this is an effort I'm. They're asking if you wouldn't mind scooting that direction. Oh. Just a little so you can be in the camera. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be recorded. <laughs> Um, so this is an effort I'm working on right now, and this has to do with housing. But there is a population out there that are really not ready to get into housing. Um, they've, been in, uh, they've been in housing multiple times, they've been in treatment multiple times, they've dealt with the law enforcement multiple times, this is the very most difficult folks uh, that we see unsheltered or in our shelters. And, um, and, and our best uh, situation there is to provide shelter or safe places for them to, to be because unsheltered uh, or unsanctioned camping is the worst thing that we can accept as communities. It's because of the victimization that goes on in those encampments. They're not fit for human habitation. Sanitation uh, is lacking. And so that's the worst thing. And we gotta answer the question, where do people go? And what happens when our resource centers and our shelters are full? What's the answer? Well, on the other end of that, there, are, there is a population that are ready to get into housing. So I've been working with Utah Housing Corporation. I've been working with our, uh, a couple of our housing authorities. And uh, over the last couple of months, we've come up with a model that we're gonna take to the legislature. And we've already made a lot of progress because this, this program was approved by the Unified Economic Opportunity Commission. That's a new commission that's created by the legislature to review items before session. The governor, the speaker, and the president are, uh, I think they're chairs of that commission. So, the two red items here in the, let's go back to the slides. Housing is important, and it's the antithesis of homelessness. But housing does not work without support, without the services, case management, uh, the building of community, employment, life skills, uh, and some we can move on into, uh, um, into market rates and, and maybe just a low income housing situation. Uh, but without that support, housing doesn't work. And then without housing, support doesn't work. I've talked to so many people that have been in treatment and then they get released back out on the street. That is a waste of resources and only creates more hopelessness. So those two go together and we have to make sure that whatever housing goes in, there's support. Now we already have some big funding streams that will help us with this. Medicaid, 
And with the new 1115 waiver that the state just got approved on for a TAM population, we can pay, I believe, you know, half to two thirds of the cost of treatment and support for this housing with Medicaid. And then on the housing side, we've had low income housing tax credits for years. This is a federal program. It's just that a lot of that hasn't gone to deeply affordable housing, 30% uh, area median income and below, because these projects don't pencil. I'm a real estate developer, uh, at least in the past, and I know what it takes to make these projects pencil. Those do not pencil. There's just not the rent flow that will uh, enable that project to succeed. So, but we, but with LIHTC, 70% of that housing cost can be paid for. So let's take advantage of them. The missing part of this is up in the left-hand corner, rent support grants. So these would be project-based grants, and we're asking for 15 million ongoing from the legislature for this. Uh, and it got approved through the uh, UEOC. Uh, I'm now working on getting into the governor's budget. And then the next step is getting in the legislative budget. So rent support would be, uh, tenants can pay up to 30% of their income. Now sometimes that's zero, sometimes that's $500, but it probably averaged about 300 for this population. But that's not enough to make the housing work and to even qualify for LIHTC. So what we would do is give grants to, pro it would be on a project to uh, basis, project by ba project basis, that would support the rent flow so that the housing could be maintained, that's the lights on, the heat on, all the maintenance, and also provide an additional revenue stream to fill the gap that Medicaid doesn't pay for. We got to have this strong support to make the housing work. And that's why we need these rent support grants. And I'm hoping that the league will consider this and, and also support our effort in getting these uh, rent support grants because it'll make a huge difference in getting more housing, deeply affordable housing available. Uh, we'll still have some gap funding, but if you know about um, ongoing funds, if you secure those ongoing funds and, and it takes a couple of years to ramp up getting all that $15 million, uh, I figure it'll take four years um, into projects, that will create some one-time money that we can put down into that gap funding and fill that, that gap in the housing also. Because if we don't have a debt service on that housing, then that money can go over to services. But here's where we need your help. Uh, we need it as where. <laughs> what are their market issues, uh, location, getting approvals. Uh, every city has, is a source of homelessness and every city now needs to, to, wait, to be part of solution and helping us uh, get locations where we can do deeply affordable housing. That's uh, the end of my presentation. I wanted to at least show you what we're doing uh, for housing going forward and ask you for your support and your help, not only in the legislative process, but in locating these deeply affordable housing units. It can be up to 30 um, or, or even 25. It doesn't have to be 60 or 80. Uh, it, it's actually better that we may have uh, a few or smaller projects to, to make these work. So anyway, thank you for your time today and uh, please support us in this going uh, forward into the legislative session. Thank you very much.